Hello and welcome to Oz Chris vs. Marvel Comics for week 4 of uh, November, here with reviews of Fallen Angels number 2, uh, Scream Curse of Carnage number 1, Venom number 20, and X-Horse number 2. So starting off with Fallen Angels number 2, written by Brian Hill, the art, the art, sorry, the art by uh, Zyman uh, Krudansky, coloring by Frank Diamata, the cover by Ashley Witter. So the story is split in two. We have a flashback to Psylocke, to Quanon's um, past, uh, her being hired to kill this man and his uh, family, uh, kind of t maybe tying into this whole like little kid, possibly her daughter or possibly the daughter of this family um, that Psylocke has ties to. But the uh, present day stuff is they have no leads on Apoth yet. Uh, X-23 wants Psylocke's help with dealing with kind of a rage that's inside of her. And Cable um, asks Psylocke for help dealing with the situation in a place called, um, I'm going to butcher the name, Sao Mateus, where the villagers are, are being forced into slave labor. Everyone, especially the children, um, and if they don't comply, they are killed. So these giant, you know, uh, mechanical robots that are kind of enforcing this, uh, slave labor. Um, so Cable gives, uh, Cable asks for her help in this situation. Psylocke doesn't agree. It doesn't have, have anything to do with Krakoa. It doesn't have anything to do with Apoth, but eventually, you know, after a talk with, um, Sinister, she agrees to take, uh, X-23 with her to he help Cable with this situation. So story, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give four out of five. I think <clears throat> there's an interesting approach with um, exploring Psylocke's past, uh, the present day stuff, not so much, but I did really like the, um, the flashback stuff with Psylocke. You don't get told everything. So it's a lot, it's a bit more action orientated with, um, what's going on with her past, but I believe it's somehow going to tie into all this Apoth stuff. The art and the coloring, I'm going to give a four out of five. I do like this kind of bit, you no know, darker setting and the, the art and coloring really work <coughs> well with this. Um, I would say probably a, a bit of an improvement compared to issue number one. The cover, I'm going to give a four out of five. I think the art and coloring is here is good. Um, doesn't really capture what happened in this issue, mainly uh, Cable's mission and it kind of what happens at the end, but I think it's a good cover nonetheless. So on to Scream Curse of Carnage number one, a new series uh, written by, let's see, written by Clay McLeod Chapman, uh, art by Chris Mooneyham, coloring by Rain Bredo, and I got the art germ variant so after the events of the um scream tie-in for absolute carnage andy benton who was mania is now the new scream host so she's trying to deal with being the host to another symbiote um something she doesn't particularly enjoy uh scream is constantly screaming inside of andy andy's head to um get out you know do its own thing but andy is Andy's not having it. Um, we get a little bit of flashbacks to um, her past, something to deal with her mother, which kind of ties into what happens at the end of this issue. And Andy is currently residing in Feast, where Aunt May is, you know, looking over that, helping the homeless and all that. But um, during the night, um, Andy lets Scream out to deal with, you know, troubling people, evil people, all of that. And while this is going on, there seems to be these weird fish kind of people that scream notices has some connection to symbiotes or to what <coughs> was happening in absolute carnage so they're coming out um at the start of the issue a body with all these weird tentacles and fish like stuff is coming out of the their body so we have our lead up to our, who our antagonists are so i'll leave it there story i'm going to give it a <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Story, I'm going to give it a uh, a 4 out of 5. I think it was a, a good, at least decent start to this series. I do wish um, Cullen Bottom was actually the writer for this because the screen times were actually really, really good and he was the one that was writing that. But um, uh, Chapman is do has done a, a good job so far, so I'm interested to see how this series goes 
um, going forward with it. The art and the coloring, I'm going to give a four out of five. The art and coloring is, is definitely good. There's a weird kind of a contrast with the coloring. So, oh, with the art and the coloring. So when the fish people stuff, all of that stuff arrives, it, it does feel like it's done by a different artist, but it, you know, it's just the one artist and the one colorist. Um, uh, it does give off the sense that it's like this really weird, almost dark, kind of horrifying kind of thing. So the art and coloring there really works well there. Uh, the cover, I got the art gem one. I'm going to give it a four out of five. Good art and good coloring, but I've seen better art gem. I think art gem, there's, specific, there's a specific kind of style that art gem works best with and a character like Scream, I don't know, it doesn't really work with his style, but I think it's a good cover nonetheless. So onto Venom number 20, written by Donny Cates, the art by... Ivan Coelho and Z Carlos, coloring by Rain Pareto, the cover by Carl Hotz and Dan Brown. So in the aftermath of um, absolute carnage and also what's going on with Venom, the maker has escaped. Um, uh, it's still shown that he has the symbiotes, but he seems to be kind of normal, normal-ish after what's going on. But he's talking to these to this unknown person about his discovery about Dylan and the powers that he possesses. And um, he uh, theorizes that um, each of Venom's offspring and the offspring that come off from his offspring, they spawn an offspring whenever there's about to be something big happening, something terrible in the universe. So, so um, you know, just before Thanos began his search, um, the Carnage was produced, and then um, just before the Avengers were disassembled, Toxin was produced. Uh, Scorn and Razor before like uh, uh, certain events uh, before the Chaos War and the Second you No know, Civil War, all of that. So, uh, and Dylan is an anomaly; he's not a direct symbiote spawn, and as such, makers worried. What's next? If he's such a he has all these powers. He's not a he's not a regular symbiote offspring. He was born from a, a piece of a symbiote attaching itself to a living fetus. So, uh, if he has this power, and if if his if the maker's theory about symbiote offsprings being spawned before a, a huge cataclysmic event or a huge event, what's what's next? And that's uh, mainly what happens in this issue. Um, you get a little bit of Eddie and Brock. Um, no, Eddie Brock and then not two separate characters. Eddie and Dylan um come into terms that um Eddie is actually Dylan's father and agrees to tell them a bit more about his mother. So starting their kind of uh instead of being brotherly relation relationship, more of a father son relationship. But mainly what's going on with this issue is what Maker is theorizing, what he's discovered, and we actually get a reveal of who he's actually working for, which is actually a nice surprise. I actually. I didn't guess until like the like page, the kind of the last page leading up. I was like, wait, who is he talking to? And then it turns out it's an organization. And like, I'm actually really surprised by who it turned out to be, uh, who he's working for. So story, I'm going to give it a, a four out of five. Although it's not a really a Venom. <laughs> Venom is really not the focus of this ser of this <coughs> issue, despite the fact that it is his comic. I think it was a good story, a nice little wrap up to um absolute carnage you know so lead up to what's going on next hinting there's something bigger i'm going to assume it's going to be null considering at the end of absolute carnage null is now free so that he's going to be the next big threat to venom and all that but very uh, really good issue art and coloring i'm going to give a uh 4.5 out of 5 i think the art and coloring here is great the cover i'm going to give a uh, 4.5 out of 5 as well. Great looking cover, great art, great coloring. And on to X-Force number 2, written by... <coughs> sorry. Written by <coughs> Benjamin Percy, art by Joshua Kassara, coloring by Dean White, the cover by Dustin Weaver. So, <coughs> so after the events of issue number 1, Xavier is dead. That was quick. And he did, they killed him off in a title... X Force, not not even like the main line X Men title. They kill him off in X Force, so all the mutants gather around um, 
to see that <laughs> the one that's united there, like all, the entire race is has died. But it seems like um um they can resurrect him, but there is a different way to resurrect him, not with not with the five. But while this is going on, um Gene um Gene stays to uh, figure out what's with these reavers the reavers that are attacking get gather some information from them and wolverine goes out on his own as he says hunting to find um domino he meets up with quentin the kid omega who helps him with his search and it leads him to a factory a a literal um assassin factory uh the assassins are being uh born and created within this factory and um one of them wakes up leading to Wolverine and Quentin fighting off against those assassins. So story, I'm going to give this a four or five, a definite improvement on the first one. We actually get a proper reasoning as to why Xavier isn't resurrected immediately because in House and Powers of X, they've established there is the five, a group, group of mutants which can resurrect the dead. Using their powers together, they can resurrect them. And after this whole Xavier is dead, I would assume everyone would be like, bring the five. They can bring the dead back. Bring him in. Why isn't the five being acknowledged? Um, this one shows that Xavier is a special case. There is a certain way to resurrect him, and it seems like it doesn't involve the five. So thank you for actually kind of explaining that because that would have been a huge plot hole that just... Oops, sorry, that almost fell. Uh, that would have been a huge plot hole that um, Xavier um, is dead and they have a group of people that can resurrect him and they're just coincidentally missing for some reason. Um, so thank you, Benjamin Percy, for actually kind of clarifying that a bit. Uh, but the overall story as well, Search for Domino, what's going on with these new Reavers, very interesting. So I'm definitely going to continue X-Force. The <clears throat> art and the coloring, I'm going to give a four or five i really like the art and coloring here good art good coloring really works well with just <coughs> this this is a weird one like the action scenes are good but a lot of these scenes where it's just characters just contemplating doing stuff like hacking or entering whatever just even just like quentin appearing the art the art is actually much better than the action side of things in this and this is a comic which is supposed to be half half like it's there's the espionage stuff and then there's the obvious like black ops hunting uh, assassinations and all that and stuff so really like the very kind of normal almost laid back stuff is where the art is actually actually at its best and the cover i'm gonna give a four to five good art good co uh good coloring and actually captures what happens in this issue um quentin and wolverine fighting off um the uh the man-made assassins at the assassin factory so that is it for those four thank you all for watching uh if you want to follow me on um social media my handles for twitter and instagram are in the outro uh, if you like the video leave a like if you haven't already subscribe hit the notification bell and i will see you all in the next one